You're sitting in the warm shallows of some crystal clear water, the waves lapping over your knees as you sip a rum cocktail and the smell of barbecue conch and lobster drifts under your nostrils. You like the sound of that? If you do, keep watching Planet Cruise Weekly. Hello and welcome to Planet Cruise Weekly, episode 32 with myself, Keith, and... Uh... Hello. Glenn. He's not called hello, he's called Glenn. <laughs> hello. <laughs> and this week we're talking, actually, Glenn, uh, well, it's the first in a, in a multi-series, a mini-series. A mini-series. I like that sound. There you go. It sounds Look a bit HBO, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Uh, it's, all about, it's all about the Caribbean. Yep, our um, favourite destination. Our favourite destination, you're right, an amazing part of the world. Uh, and this week we're looking at the Western Caribbean, but tell us about the Caribbean a little bit. I mean, we worked down there for a number of years. I did eight years down in the Caribbean, and, and I think people always think, oh, every island's the same, but it's not. I mean, every island uh, suits everybody's taste, so the Caribbean's the ultimate place for relaxation. Some of the islands are lush with rainforest and mountain trials, where others have desert climates and coral beaches. Some are really commercially active now. You know, many of the ships go in there every single week, so very commercially active. And some are almost like living back in the 1970s, a bit like a time warp. Now, wherever you visit, you can taste regional specialities such as conch fritters. You can get out on the water, try snorkeling, sailing, scuba diving. And you can also choose to cruise either the west, the east, or the southern parts of the Caribbean. But because it's such a big subject matter today, we're just gonna look at the Western Caribbean. So the first thing to do is to actually let people know where the Western Caribbean is. This consists of the islands due south of Florida, such as Grand Cayman and Jamaica. You've got destinations on Mexico's Caribbean coast, uh, or near what we call the Yucatan Peninsula, places like Costa Maya, uh, Cozumel and Progreso. And then you've got the Central American destinations on the Caribbean, such as um, Belize, Honduras, plus Key West, which is on Florida's most southwestern tip. And a majority of the Western Caribbean cruises leave from the eastern US ports of Miami and Fort Lauderdale. So it's a great choice for first time cruise and it's really easy to get out there as well uh, and offers loads of uh, cruise and stay opportunities. Because of the sheer number of different islands on offer and the variety of itineraries, the Western Caribbean also has enough legs to also tempt back experienced cruisers that have been maybe in this part of the world before that want to go back and back again. And you've got great variety of ports there. And the thing about the Caribbean, obviously, is it's, it's an ideal time for a getaway because the temperatures pretty much stay the same year round. They never really vary from highs in the 80s to lows in the 70s, and the humidity stays around 70%, which is nice and comfortable the majority of the time. But the best time to visit, uh, the main solid season, particularly when you'll see ships from P&O and Cunard and maybe Thompson heading out to spend their, their, their winter in the Caribbean, is from December through to March, uh, where, of course, it's cold in the north, uh, and it's nice and warm, but not stormy in the Caribbean. And then late April to May are what we call the shoulder season. Shoulder season? Season. season. Yeah. Season's the word I was looking for there. Uh, when the ships and the islands are not as crowded and the weather is still good, but not quite as good as it was earlier on. Another thing that people ask a lot about, and they obviously get a little bit worried about it, is hurricane season. And this generally runs from June through to November, with storms most likely from August through to October. However, many families and honeymooners flock to the Caribbean during the summer. Prices don't tend to dip and the ships sail out despite most of the storm possibilities, but they're normally the time for the hurricane season. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is have a look at some of the main ports of call that you'll find in a typical Western uh, Caribbean itinerary and have a look at what you can do there, a few of our suggested highlights. But if you do want more information um, about the Western Caribbean, click the link there and it will take you through to some of our expert advice from our team. Now, uh, the first one we're going to look at is Belize, and uh, this is fantastic. It's located at the base of what we call the Yucatan Peninsula, and the country's dense rainforest is, is dotted with, with mine ruins. It's an, an ex-English colony, it uh, is. and therefore it's the only, this is quite interesting, the only English-speaking country in Central America. And it has this feeling of being more of a, a Caribbean island than a, a Central American republic. Yeah, it's beautiful down there as well. And the forest is also home to a wide range of tropical wildlife and the Belize Zoo. There are paths carved into 29 acres of jungle allowing visitors to see more than 120 animals native to Belize, including jaguars, you've got storks, howler monkeys, crocodiles, and of course, more as well. Another popular thing to do is taking a motorboat ride on what they call the Old Belize River, and you go through the jungle, these waterways that are teeming with crocodiles and iguanas sunning themselves on the rocks. Or you can go across the marshy water as what's known as the Almond Hill Lagoon on an airboat ride, where well, you may be lucky enough to spot a manatee. Um, and of course, manatees are very, very rare, only a few places in the world where you can actually enjoy this wonderful, gentle, gentle creature. 
And also as well, of course, a lot of people like doing their swimming in and snorkeling, and offshore is the world's second largest barrier reef, and it offers some of the finest diving in the world. So if you're into your diving, take your certificates with you and do some brilliant diving in Belize. Mm, it's amazing. Next up, another lovely port, which is located in the heart of the Yucatan Peninsula on Mexico's coast, and it's known as Costa Maya. Uh, now, this is actually a man-made tourist village. It's got bars and restaurants and shops and pools. Uh, so the best thing to do is to head next door to the, this kind of sleepy fishing village, and it's there where you get this lovely long stretch of water, uh, much calmer kind of water, you know, kind of seas for you to enjoy, and a whole host of water sports options. Uh, Costa Maya has the highest concentration of Mayan archaeological sites and Mayan population in Mexico and you can explore the ruins of some of these great cities. You've got a chance to visit the stone cities of step pyramids, plazas and palaces which almost disappeared overnight as well. Um, now the area was also a paradise for divers and snorkelers. You get a great chance to see sea turtles gliding through the waters, dolphins are quite often sighted as well and lots of vibrant coral reefs with a great fish population there as well. If you want something a little bit trendy and a little bit funky as well you've got Overo Beach Club. It's customised most luxurious resorts and it lets you sunbathe, relax in the hammock, take a swim, play a bit of beach volleyball and enjoy the uh, variety of restaurants and bars. So sticking with the Mexican theme we're now going to go to Cozumel which is one of my absolute favourite places in the world. It's a Mexican island again just off the Yucatan Peninsula uh, and this is much more of a Caribbean stereotype island. Beautiful long stretches of sand, lovely nodding palm trees and amazing scuba diving and the great thing about this is that it's drift diving so it's really really easy diving you sit there and let the current take you around and again for something that will please the whole family head to Chanakab I hope I said that right national park botanical gardens underwater coves and the dolphin center are just some of the attractions there and if you want to delve into Cosmos past you can go to the San Miguel Museum and the star turn there is this incredible replica mine village but if you want to go all Indiana Jones you've got a chance to do that for as well you can go to the uh, San Giovanni uh, area as well which is a cluster of old temples and plazas and it's something a little bit special there is the temple of hands whose walls are peppered with spooky red handprints okay next up it's grand cayman which is the biggest of the three cayman islands uh, and the capital where your dock is called georgetown and this is an amazing place perfect weather stunning beaches and in fact talking of beaches the real jewel in the crown here is what's called the seven mile beach it's one of the longest most gorgeous stretches of beach in the caribbean and amazingly you can actually walk from one one end to the other completely freely because none of it's privately owned. <laughs> uh, close encounters with stingrays are one of the highlights of the visit to Georgetown and you can take a catamaran from the harbour and head out to the stingray sandbar where you can swim with the rays and even pet them. Uh, now the other thing you can do is you can slide your feet into stirrups and uh, see the coast of Grand Cayman on horseback. But you've done that as well, haven't you? That's oh, something well, you would definitely do. Love a pair of stirrups. You didn't wear them though, you wear them. <laughs> There you go. Um, also, you can visit the Queen Elizabeth Botanical Gardens, the park's home to 26 different types of native orchids, as well as lakes, woodlands, and butterfly habitat. And again, don't forget to try the local Tatuga rum cake, and if you have time, explore the legendary Cayman Wall on board one of the submarines. In fact, do nothing else apart from try the rum cake. It's amazing. Now, probably the most famous of the ports in the Western Caribbean is Jamaica. Um, so much so, there are three different ports that you can go to um, here. And then you've got Montego Bay, which is probably the most famous. You've also got um, Osho Rias, and you've got Falmouth. And they're all based on the northern coast. They are. Montego Bay, I've personally been on holiday for. It's a great area. It's the most common port they have there. Very, very lively, fantastic coastline, bracketed by clear blue waves and coconut palms. Ocherius is the closest to Dun Rivers Falls, which we'll talk about in a minute, and the new edition of Falmouth, where Usain Boat was born. Um, now, Rose's Hall <laughs> is one of the most uh, famous things you can do. Uh, it's the island's first plantation house, and in fact, locals actually swear it's still haunted by really? the former inhabitant, who they say was a witch, um, and you can taste some of her witch's brew, which um, certainly made for a, an interesting afternoon for me. Now, again, another one of the popular attractions, it's the most popular attraction to do in Jamaica, is Dun Rivers Falls, and again, if you've never done it before, I would advise you go there. The water waterfalls here are terraced like a giant flight of steps and the safest way to get to the top is by holding the hands of fellow tourists and you can walk like a human chain. You have to wear the most unflattering shoes in the world but again take a waterproof camera with you some great great photos there as well. There's nothing wrong with sensible shoes going. <laughs> Now another one of my favourite things to do is to have a go at floating along what they call the Martha Bray River. Uh, you've got these bamboo rafts which you float down on. Also you've got the Crocodile Nursery in Montego Bay, makes for a great day out. Reptiles range in age from hatchlings to five year olds and the highlight of the day is feeding time when you can watch the babies enjoying their lunch but just don't get too close. <laughs> and another great opportunity of course is the dolphin encounter. Great chance to interact with what's called the bottlenose dolphin family. Uh, it's a great cove, it's an ocean themed property in fact and there's great ways for you to interact 
um, and actually find out more about this incredible species. So the next port in our Western Caribbean overview is Key West, mainland US of A. It's tiny, it's two by four miles in totality. It's the southernmost city in continental US. You've got a chance to stroll the two mile harbour walk, past shops and restaurants that line the harbour. It's also home to schooners, catamarans and other sightseeing vessels as well. Now, if you can, get a chance to go to Ernest Hemingway's home. There you'll find dozens of polydactyl cats. Uh, and there's also a little White House nearby as well, which is where Harry Truman uh, used to relax. Very nice. Key West uh, Mel Fisher Maritime uh, Museum houses millions of dollars worth of treasure salvaged from the Spanish Galleon. And at sunset, tradition requires heading over to Malloy Dock to see it come alive in celebration of jugglers, musicians and street performers as the sun goes down. But by far the best thing to do is to hire a car, to drive up through the Keys and to head into the Everglades and go out on one of those big airboats. It's absolutely incredible. Okay, now another fantastic diving destination, Roatan. This is uh, owned by Honduras. In fact, it sits 30 miles north of Honduras. It's the largest of what we know as the Bay Islands and noted really for, again, beautiful beaches, lush tropical foliage, super friendly people, and a delightful, unspoiled mecca for divers as it just sits off the second largest coral reef in the world. Uh, and you can imagine this place because it's, it's brilliant. Lobster is the common lunch. Uh, traffic lights don't exist, which is my favourite thing. Yeah. Um, and you can actually hail a taxi on the water. So it's, it's a really beautiful place. Now the next bit's quite important because it's about the itineraries. And although we've talked about the Western Caribbean, as you can see, there are quite a few different ports and certain cruises only cover a certain number of ports uh, for a certain amount of time. Uh, and what will surprise a lot of people is that a lot of companies actually do four to five night trips out of some of the American ports. If you're looking at people like Celebrity Disney, Norwegian Princess, Royal Caribbean, um, they give you an opportunity to go and get a little bit of, of sun and sea if maybe you've got a more limited budget or a limited time scale. So the four nighters depart from a variety of home ports in maybe Florida, Texas and Louisiana. They typically have one port of call in Cozumel. Uh, then the five nighters feature two port calls, typically uh, one of the Jamaican ports uh, or Grand Cayman and Cozumel. They also have stops in the cruise line's private island, because again, a lot of them have their own private islands now, or you might get Key West thrown on the end. Then there's seven island cruises, which typically call into one of the three Jamaican ports of call, uh, plus Grand Cayman and Cozumel, plus sometimes a fourth stop at a private island or Key West. Uh, then you've got seven night Central America cruises, which usually offer three or four stops like Roatan, Belize, Costa Maya, and or Cozumel. And they offer more opportunities for excursions to the Mayan sites, in addition to the sun and fun options of the islands. Then there's seven night Central America and island cruises, and these offer a real combination. So you've got four port days uh, with a mix of the ports, plus maybe the Bahamas thrown in sometimes, Key West or Grand Cayman, so you really get a bit of everything. And then a few lines such as P&O and Thompson offer longer 10 to 14 night cruises, and these will combine all of the Western Caribbean and sometimes a little bit maybe of the Eastern and Southern as well uh, with a couple of days at sea. That was easy to understand, wasn't it? Yeah, good luck. And now for the bit you've all been waiting for, we give you our top tips for this part of the world. The first one, obviously, is the Caribbean. It's sunny, so take lots of suntan lotion. The higher the factor, the better. Don't underestimate the power of the sun. And take a drinking bottle of water with you as well, um, because a drinking bottle of water, just, just a bottle of water that you can drink from. <laughs> I said that well, didn't I? Just take some water with you. Just take some water, yeah. uh, It also says here, take a lightweight Raymac. At some point, you'll get caught in a wonderful tropical downpour. Yeah. I've been caught in a wonderful tropical oh, downpour. Wonderful. I didn't think it was wonderful. <laughs> Although some of the ports such as Jamaica might have a touristy vibe, you can find peaceful beaches and friendly hangouts not too far out of town. Do some research ahead of time and you can find a slice of paradise on even the most crowded days because there will be a number of ships in each destination. Well, we hope that's been beneficial to you. We hope that's given you a nice overview of the Western Caribbean. We are going to have the, um, the Eastern Caribbean and the Southern Caribbean coming up later in the year as well. So lots to look forward to. Yeah. Uh, and if you want more information about different cruises that you can currently book to go out to the Western Caribbean, click the link there and you'll be put through to one of our wonderful destination specialists. Also as well, if you want to check us out, you can uh, find us on Facebook, Twitter. You can check out our website as well. Also email us at hello at planetcruise.co.uk and we're here to assist. The best way if you're not sure what to book is give us a call in the office and we'll point you in the right direction. And I want to say thank you to people that got in touch last week. Um, thank you so much. So a uh, big thank you to Phil Yeomans, first of all. Good old Phil we Good used to work Phil. with. We used to know, we know Phil. We know Phil. 
feel we could lad. He was uh, X, X, P and O and Q and R, like, like us. Yes. And uh, he, he said uh, of last week's episode, which is all about first time cruisers, and thank you for all your feedback about that. We couldn't mention it all. He said, good advice for first time cruisers from two old sea dogs. That's true, yeah. <laughs> I've been called worse by him. Exactly. Who I had the pleasure to work with over the years. So thanks very much, Phil. Um, and then also the Woodsies have been in touch. Um, and thank you so much because uh, Ange, uh, and, and Mark said this, they said, me and Ange have been drinking at that ice bar on Eclipse um, with Keith again. Um, an amazing, we had amazing cosmopolitan cocktails. So nice. thank you, thank you very much, Mark and Ange. I'm, I'm gutted that I couldn't be there with you this time. Well, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to tune in next week for another exciting episode of Planet Cruise Weekly. And in the meantime, have a great week. Uh, happy sailing and uh, see you soon. Cheers, guys.